Hello and welcome to you wherever you're listening from. Thank you for taking this time off to listen to us as we encourage each other through the precious word of God. May I greet you then this morning on behalf of that name that is above every other name, the name Jesus Christ himself. For a short while we want to draw an encouragement uh, uh, based on the story in Luke's Gospel chapter 2 and verse 46. Mary and Joseph as customary every year they go to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover. And on this occasion as Luke would relate the story to us, uh, Jesus as a 12 year old accompanies his parents uh, to this festival. There are perhaps a unique reason why Jesus went with them on this time. As a 12-year-old, Joseph, uh, his father, would stop teaching him all the commands, the rules, and the regulations, the laws of Moses. Uh, and then, as a 12-year-old, uh, Jewish custom would dictate that the boy uh, would celebrate a bar mitzvah. And then he is given into the hands of somebody that's more learned, somebody that's more qualified in Jewish customs, Jewish laws, uh, to take up the mantle further and to train this young boy. Or, or any young boy for that matter. So Jesus accompanies Joseph and Mary as a 12 year old. The Bible tells us the feast was complete and they returned back. Mary supposing that Jesus was sitting uh, or, or with Joseph at the back of the convoy and Joseph probably thinking the same that Jesus was with Mary in the front of the pack. Lo and behold, unbeknown to them both, Jesus was not in their company. And a day's journey or return journey back home, they suddenly realized that Jesus was not with them. They frantically decided to search. They looked at the caravans, they went to the friends, they went to the to their acquaintances, to family, and Jesus was not in the company of anyone they knew. The Bible would tell us that they come back to Jerusalem and three days later they eventually find Jesus safe and sound. I want you to understand the trauma the parents might have gone on the first day when not finding Jesus. The one that is near and dear to them and mary must have thought how could i lose this boy he was promised for a great destiny and how can i not how can i lose this boy i can imagine the the thoughts that might have been going through joseph after he was educated in the birth of jesus and he accepted full responsibility and 12 years later he finds that they cannot find this boy Imagine the trauma going through the minds on the second day when they could not find him, wherever they looked for Jesus in Jerusalem, in the local swimming pool, in the playgrounds, around the festivals, and every and any possible place. On the second day, they could not find Jesus. Imagine what might have been going through the minds of these parents that loved this boy so much. Then on the third day, the Bible would tell us that they eventually find him, much to their relief, much to the joy, much to the comfort, they find him in the company of learned people sitting in the temple. Mary addresses Jesus and says, uh, paraphrased, the pain that you've caused us for the last three days, the trauma that you've caused us, the anguish that you've caused us. She goes on to tell Jesus, your father and I was worried about you, looking for you. And Jesus' response to Mary was not being irresponsible, not that he disrespected them. All he said to them, why were you looking for me? Don't you know that I am in my father's house doing my father's business? The concept that I want to highlight, Mary says, your father and I. And Jesus says, I was in my father's house. Well, Joseph, don't take this to heart. He's not telling you that you should have been in the temple as well. He's not by any means telling you that you are not his father. But Jesus knew at the tender age of 12 the mandate that he had. Mary and Joseph on the third day, the triumph that they had in finding this boy. Imagine the mind, imagine the heart, imagine the joy that Mary and Joseph felt on that third day when they saw this familiar face. The Old Testament records a story about Jonah and the big fish. Jonah was thrown overboard for his disobedience because he was not about his father's business. Imagine the first night after being swallowed by the fish. It was all doom and gloom for him. There was nothing he could do. There was no way of escape. There was not even that one telephone call to phone home. There was no way of trying to find some help deep in the fish's belly or deep in the ocean. That's where he stood. Imagine the anguish on the second day when there was no way of escape and no one beyond the triumph on the third day when the whale beached and spewed him out and he saw 
a familiar sight. Whilst tragedy might have struck him, but on the third day, he found triumph. Whilst Mary and Joseph might have thought tragedy had struck, had struck them when they couldn't find Jesus, but the triumph on the third day when they found Jesus. And this story, as Luke would record for us, is a foreshadowing of what Mary would endure 21 years later. 21 years later, pretty much in the same place, pretty much amongst the company of the very same people, Jesus will be lynched by an angry mob. On the first day as he gets nailed to the cross, imagine the anguish Mary feels all over again. Surely a mind might race back to 21 years earlier when she could not find Jesus. Then the triumph on the third day when he rises again and tells them that he's going back to his father's home. 21 years earlier he was about his father's business. 21 years later he was going back to be with his father. Triumph on the third day. As you continue the search for whatever you're looking for, as you continue the search for the solution that you're looking for, as you continue the search for the answer that you're looking for, you might be going through the first night of arrowing experience. You might be going through the second day of disastrous consequences. Uh, but help is around the corner. Your terrifying moments uh, will turn into triumph uh, around the next turn. Yes, Mary and Joseph endured but they triumphed. Jonah endured and he, tri and he triumphed. And whilst you are enduring whatever you're going through, I want for you to know that you will triumph in your situation. Let's pray. So whatever your ter terrifying moments are right now, whatever you're searching for right now, uh, we're going to trust God to lead, guide and direct you. Father, we come at those that are listening to you right now. Whatever experiences they're going through right now, Lord, we ask that you would lead them, you would guide them, and that you would bless them, that you would be the center of all, and that you would undertake for them in their quest, in the search. And Father, help them to know that their triumph is around the next turn. In Jesus' name, amen.